Today, I'll show you how to make this amazingly tender smoked brisket on the Mesa 400 grill by Monument. And by using the rotisserie attachment, not only is it crazy tender, but it stayed beautifully juicy too. This was actually my first time making a rotisserie brisket, but it really turned out perfectly. And hey, that's not just spin. And don't worry, even though we're cooking on a propane grill, we're going to be using real smoke for this. So let's jump in here and get started. Our brisket today is a medium size by brisket standards, I suppose. It's about 13 and a half pounds total. And the easiest mistake to make here is not seasoning it quite enough, considering what a large piece of meat it is. So I'm going to employ a little bit of math here just to make sure we're getting it right. We want about one teaspoon per pound. We'll call that about five grams. So 13.5 times five, and we need about 67 and a half grams of salt for this, which is gonna seem like a huge amount as we're measuring it out, but don't worry, it's math. You really can't eyeball the amount with a piece of meat this large. And unlike a lot of brisket recipes I see, the only other seasoning I'm actually going to be putting on here today is pepper. Now, I do like the tricolor peppercorns. I think you get a much nicer flavor that way, but I'm not going to be adding any paprika or chili powder or anything else like that. I really love the simplicity of salt and pepper brisket. But trying to hand grind that much would probably break my wrist. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my coffee grinder here to grind up about two tablespoons of these peppercorns. And I'm not going to measure them out too meticulously because unlike the salt, it really doesn't matter. The amount of pepper you add is just a personal preference. So we'll just go ahead and get those peppercorns ground up nice and fine. I want them to be able to get into all those little nooks and crannies on our brisket. And at first looking at this, I thought maybe it was a little too much pepper, but I thought, you know what, considering the size of the meat and how much salt we have here, let's just go for it. I'm going to use all of that pepper. And if you wanted to also add garlic powder, onion powder, ginger, chili powder, any of that sort of stuff, now would be the time. You can just get that mixed right in here and make your own custom spice rub. Just so long as you do one teaspoon of salt per pound of your meat, whatever else you add should be just fine. And looking at that a little closer, I'm glad I used all the pepper. That looks like the perfect salt and pepper mix to me. So let's go ahead and season this beautiful piece of beef. And you're definitely going to want to use your hands here. We want to rub it all over. That's why they call it a spice rub, not a spice sprinkle. We want to rub it into all the nooks and crannies of our beef pretty aggressively. Really just try and get that salt and pepper everywhere you can. Just flip it over and do the same thing again. We want to use all of the seasoning that we made for this. You shouldn't have any left over at the end. If you do, just sprinkle some more on anywhere you can get it to stick. And before I get assaulted in the comment section over this super simple spice rub, give it a try. This is actually what I do with my smoked ribs now too. I think you'll find that simple is often best in a case like this. But because we're using a propane rotisserie today, I do want to add some extra smoke to the environment. So I'm going to be using these wood chips and it's good to soak them in a little bit of water first. But now the fun part, we need to take this giant rotisserie bar and skewer it all the way through our brisket. We want to try and get this through the middle as much as possible, but don't worry too much, just watch your hands. Once you get the skewer started especially, it's usually better to lay the meat flat and just kind of push it the rest of the way through like that. Make sure you're not doing what I'm doing and putting your hand on the other side where the skewer is going to be coming out. That's probably not a good idea. The holding forks on the end are adjustable, of course. We want to scoot them as tightly into place as possible and make sure to tighten the little nuts to hold them into place. Otherwise, what can happen is the rotisserie skewer itself will be spinning, but the meat won't be spinning. So don't be shy. You're not going to hurt your brisket. Really jam those forks in there and tighten that little screw up as much as you can. Now we're just going to whisk this off to our Mesa 400 grill, where it just conveniently slides right into place there. Easy as could be. Just make sure the part of the rotisserie skewer that goes into the motor is firmly into place. And then we want to tighten the bolt on the other side as tightly as we can. Otherwise, it can actually come loose and the rotisserie can come out of the engine housing just a little bit. That'll stop it from spinning and you don't want to have to go back and try and re-secure this bolt while it's hot. Trust me. So it's worth taking an extra second just to make sure that's all nice and secure before we turn this on. 
and I was actually pushing my luck here a little bit. This rotisserie engine is only rated up to 11 pounds, and I have a bit over 13 pounds on here, so I wouldn't recommend that, but it did a fine job. It had no problem turning that whatsoever. You can see our smoker box there in the background already starting to put off some wonderful applewood smoke. And just in addition to that, you do want a tray under your brisket with some hot water in it, just to add a little bit of humidity to the smoking environment. Then we just want to close up the lid and let that start smoking. We want to aim for about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and on this grill I found having the two outer burners going on low seemed to get me there just perfectly. After about 20 minutes I'm going to come back to check that the temperature is still where it should be, and it is, but it's time to get some new wood chips going. I went ahead and turned the rotisserie off because who needs a bunch of spinning metal while you're trying to do that? It would also be a great time to bust out your heat resistant gloves if you have some. Now how often you replace the wood chips in here is up to you. I would suggest every 20 or 30 minutes for at least the first 2 hours if you like a good amount of smokiness in your brisket. And while we're topping up those wood chips also just check to make sure there's still some water in that drip pan. And we're just going to continue cooking this for about 40 minutes per pound at 250 degrees. Once it's ready to pull off, this is another great moment for those heat resistant gloves. But once we have this off the grill before we slice it, I highly recommend letting it cool down until you can basically handle it to let all of those juices redistribute properly. And by far the best tool for that is one of these electric carving knives. That'll just slide right through there, no problem. And we definitely want to slice across the grain, but with brisket the grain should be running evenly from one side straight to the other, so that should be easy for us. I hope you've enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed eating this beautifully smoked rotisserie brisket. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below, subscribe, and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future videos. And if you'd like to check out this grill and some of the accessories I used today for yourself, I'll put links down in the description. And don't forget to check out one of our other great recipes on the screen now. This has been Graham with a passion for food.